Hi, I'm Benton Stokes. And I'm Elaine O'Rourke. And this is Cocktail Theology. Hi there. Hi there. How are you? I'm very excited. Are you very excited? Yes. I cannot even imagine why you're so excited. You can't? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I could. Our book <gasps> went to the publisher. Yes, it did. It and, did. And this is the annual version, a, a compilation of all five of our daily contemplations for misfit Christians books. So it's one entire year of your wisdom and my brilliance and they are all in one place together yes. and they're coming out very very soon and I'm so excited and we're going to offer it in paperback and Kindle and wait for it hardbound and the best part I'm so excited about this I'm so glad we had this idea we're also going to offer a journal to go along with it where you can write your thoughts to the questions in a separate place. I'm just, I'm so excited about it. I can barely stand it. I'm super excited about it too. Uh, we have worked incredibly hard to get this together and Elaine has done all the formatting at the end. So thank you for doing that, by the way. Uh, of course. That was a whole lot of work. But we are super excited uh, to share these with you. And uh, we really hope that you will buy many copies and give them to your friends. It's priced very affordably. It will get you through the entire year, starting with the beginning of Advent. So it follows the church calendar. Uh, but you don't have to start at the beginning of Advent. You can drop in anywhere during the year. There's a very helpful chart at the beginning of the book that explains how to do that. A really necessary uh, chart, it's pretty, actually. It's pretty important. Yeah. Someday we should just talk about the liturgical year. We yeah, should we just definitely talk. should. We definitely should. But uh, anyway, we're super excited about that. So we are celebrating that tonight. Uh, as we record, we are also having lovely cocktails. What did you make for us today? We are. So today was Martini Day. And if you haven't heard my rant about martinis, that's in another episode a ways back where I really just start ranting about what a martini is. These are martinis. Yes. Okay. But now you're not a huge dry, dry gin person. Right. right? The super dry, extra dry gin thing really only started... I don't know, 60 years ago. Like, it's, okay. it hasn't been around that long. Okay. So, I made two different varieties of the martini, both of them gin. Nice. So, the one that you have is actually a way I've really been enjoying having martinis lately. So, what you actually have is Rangpur, mm -hmm. which has that kind of lime like thing going on. It's light. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. And then I used the Dolan Blanc. Okay. And I actually did about four to one, which which is not a dry martini in the way that we talk about dry martinis. Mm -hmm. And then I grated in lemon zest mm. and shook it with that, which I really, I really like that. I like that mm -hmm. whole kind of citrus thing that's going. And then mine is a Bombay Sapphire, which is a very dry. Yes. Uh, and I used a local vermouth, also a dry vermouth. And I put in olives, but no olive juice because hello. <laughs> um, so we have two different varieties of martinis here. I'm excited. Well, okay. first we're going to cheers. Salud. 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 New book, new book. New book, new book. And you can decide whether you're a convert to martinis. Oh, that's really good. It's super light. Mm-hmm. And not crazy dry. No. I like that a lot. I thought you might. It's delicious. It's Thank very, you very good. So You're much so for welcome. It for me. My pleasure. Yeah, if you have not heard our episode on classic cocktails, what makes a cocktail classic, um, you should go back and listen to that. That's one of the ones from our Truckee sessions that we recorded up in Truckee, California. Yeah, a couple years ago, right yeah. at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, so definitely check that out. Yeah. So tonight, uh, we're actually sort of setting the stage for something that we want to do next season. Yes. But we thought it might be helpful to go ahead and talk about this. We would like to do a series that will kind of break down the Lord's Prayer. We've talked some about prayer this season. I expect we will talk a lot more about prayer next season. Uh, but one of the things that's really helpful, I think, uh, for us to uh, study when we're breaking down what prayer is, how to do it, is to study the prayer that Jesus taught us. Yes. So we're just going to do a really broad overview in this episode on, um, on kind of what the Lord's Prayer is, what we can learn from it uh, from the outset. Many of us have said it 
corporately or we have we've read it uh, certainly in the Bible and so we're familiar with it many of us can say it by heart but do we really know what it is that we're praying when we pray it and so we decided it might be really helpful to talk about that cool I grew up with the old King James Version, mm. which is the one that I think many of us know. Anybody that's, you know, my age and up maybe knows. It's the Our Father, which art in heaven. Oh, which, right. I forgot mm-hmm. about which. Hallowed or hallowed be thy name. Mm-hmm. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. So let's start with the fact that for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen is not in the Bible. Let's just start that. Yeah. Okay. So that's a doxology that was added sometime later. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's the reason the Roman Catholics don't pray that part is because it's not in the Bible. So for all of you evangelical or ex-evangelical or post-evangelicals out there who think that Catholics are less Christian than you are, (laughs) yeah, so they didn't just tack on a whole bunch of words at the end. (laughs) Just, woohoo, let's just throw some in. Yeah, no. (laughs) Anyway, so I just need to lift that up. Okay, so you had the these and thys and those and all of that Mm -hmm. stuff. The one thing I really do like about that, about the thy thing is it it helps remind me that I'm not talking to God my best friend I'm talking to God who provides I'm talking to God who is the sovereign over all right so so there's a certain amount of helpfulness in that for me but Mm -hmm. anyway I just thought I'd throw that out and of course it's been reframed over the years yes so I learned it with the thighs as well and I learned trespasses, but I know some people learned it with sins. Forgive us our sins. Mm-hmm. I have no understanding where that came from. Yeah, I don't either. That that was new to me a few years ago. Yeah. I know about debts and debtors. Right. And debts and debtors make some sense because the whole notion of forgiveness has to do with releasing your right, mm-hmm. right, to recompense or revenge. And mm-hmm. that's the whole idea of releasing someone from debt. So debts actually makes a whole lot of it sense. Is. It's a very Jewish idea, that whole idea of Jubilee where you forget people's debts and you move on. Debts makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Trespasses is a little weird, but you know, we'll mm-hmm. go with that. I mean, mm-hmm. I can I can make that argument. Sins just makes no sense at all. Yeah. For me. So, what do you want to do from here? <laughs> Well, I think from the very beginning, our father, our, first of all, not my. Huge. But our. Huge. Yeah. Father, of course, we've we've tackled that even this season, talking about how do we relate to God. Perfectly fine if you relate to God as father. Also perfectly fine if you relate to God as mother or great spirit or divine being or however you want to address God. God is all of that and much, much more. So I don't get hung up on the Our Father part. The Our, I think, is very important. It's extremely important. The Who Art in Heaven, that part gets a little weird. Um, Why? I think for me, uh, it's like God has a P.O. box in heaven, Mm. but God is everywhere. So, Ah, okay. But I can go along with, I mean, Jesus said, you know, Who Art in Heaven, so, I, I mean, I can I can go along with that, but that's not the way I think about where God is. If we're going to say God is somewhere, I just don't think about it that way. I'm getting so excited for the next series. <laughs> <'Cause you're> gonna... <laughs> I'm going to comment on every single word. I know you are. I know you are. <laughs> okay, so just a couple of things about it. I agree with you that the hour is may be the most important word in the whole darn thing. Mm-hmm. Partly because Jesus was talking to both Jews and Gentiles. And including our in there was revolutionary. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally revolutionary. The father piece, remember that what's happened is his disciples have come to him and said, teach us to pray as John's disciples were taught to pray. Mm -hmm. And remember that Jewish tradition had clearly set prayers for different times of the day, different purposes and so forth, much like monasteries do now Mm -hmm. and many, many other uh, traditions around the world. So they had come to him and said, 
John's disciples are getting all this and we're not. So t- <laughs> teach us how to pray. And, right. right. And I think they probably had that kind of like whiny voice mm-hmm. going as well. Mm-hmm. So, so he's trying to do that. The context is so important because he's not giving them a prayer. He's saying, when you pray, pray along these lines. Mm-hmm. So he uses father because he's trying to make a theological point and express his relationship with God. Yes. Okay. He's not saying you must say father here, Luke, there's some, you know, there's something else going on. And then he goes on from there. So the idea is not that it is a prayer. The idea is it's, it's a model for our prayers. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's intended. That's the way it reads. Mm -hmm. And so one of the great exercises I think we can do is to take the, the Lord's Prayer, the Jesus Prayer, whatever you call it in our book, we call it the Jesus Prayer, mm-hmm. to take that and then to rewrite it, expressing some of the same feelings, gratitudes, hopes, fears, and so forth, yeah. but in our own words, in our own time. Yeah, okay. Because that's what it's intended for. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be a, a little, like a template. Mm-hmm. We don't treat it that way, but that's what it's supposed to be as a template. I like that. Yeah, which is kind of cool. It is. It's very cool. So after that, hallowed or holy is your name. Mm -hmm. Well, it's tricky because the B there is a wish, hope, uh, demand, command, rather than a statement of fact. Right. So the way I would normally translate it would be, may your name be heard as holy, considered holy, may we respect your name, that kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. So hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on mm. earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, so when I so when I pastor churches, which I'm unlikely to ever do again unless y'all tell us to start a church and then we can talk about it. But one of the things I try to teach people is that whole phrase, thy king let's say with thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven is the way it, the cadence generally goes. Yes. I think a better way to hear it is Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, let us do your will now here, Mm -hmm. not just later, right? So there's some of that. And there's that whole notion that thy kingdom actually has, there is no coming of the kingdom the kingdom is here and so that changes all of that right yeah so thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and then give us this day our daily bread which really just means give us today enough for today right it's a manna reference give us this day our daily bread and this is where it starts getting really theologically fascinating right and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So there's that kind of kind of double-sided, right? And then it's lead us not through temptation. As if God leads us through temptation, like leads us to temptation. Mm-hmm. Like there's something kind of funny in that. But all I can figure is he must be hearkening back to Job. He must be kind of getting oh, okay. into that sense that we that we may be drawn to temptation. Because I don't think he's, I don't think Jesus is saying, God's going to take you into temptation and leave you there to suffer until you can figure it out. I mean, that's not what's right. happening, right? Right, right. Uh, but deliver us from evil. And then there's the whole rest of it that's right. added on. Okay. Yeah. Which yeah. is a good part. I mean, I love the doxology, but. Yeah. The point is there's just so much, so much to such a short prayer. And there's so much for us to gain from it both for how we pray corporately, the yes. Our Father, but also in how we pray personally, yes. in how we talk to God about give us today what we need. I love that part about about it being like manna, because mm-hmm. it's like give us just enough for today. That's right. Not asking for more than mm-hmm. what I need. And and there are some very good modern takes on, on mm-hmm. the Lord's Prayer too uh, that I know that we will touch on. But... I've heard, uh, keep us from evil or mm-hmm. save us from evil. Save us from times of trial. Save us from times of trial instead of temptation, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think all of those are useful ways mm-hmm. of talking about it. Mm-hmm. Well, and notice that it talks about, it starts out with our relationship with God, then it goes to our relationship with others, and then it goes to what our needs are, 
and then it's asking for protection. I mean, those are kind of the movement. I'm using my arm like going in these spindle <laughs> directions. Right. But but those are the movements, right? Yeah. It's this up movement, this kind of out movement, down movement. I mean, there's this thing that's going on that's wrapping the whole idea around. Um, and, and, you know, that ending part, if you leave off the doxology, is really about how we are to be in the world, mm, right? right? There's how we are to be with other people, forgiving as you know we forgive. There's the what we want from God. There's all of that. And then it's how we are to be in the world, mm-hmm. which is about the kingdom. That's about, that's about us. That's not about, oh, God, come and smite the people we both don't <laughs> like. Right. Give me the mansion that I didn't ask for when I asked for manna because that would have been rude. You know, it's not, mm-hmm. it's not that. Yeah. Saying it, I think, corporately lately in many of the services that I've been able to attend over the last few months, we've done that. And I've enjoyed that very much. I think there's there's something very powerful about all of us saying the prayer that Jesus prayed and saying it together. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised when when we moved to Tennessee and started going to various churches um, that were outside of my normal, my usual kind of range that people didn't say the Lord's Prayer. Like, nobody, nobody said it. I was like, that seems like kind of a, an easy an easy one. You know what I mean? No right. theological problems. This is sort of... What it made me think was that one of the things about the historical churches is the Lord's Prayer is part of the Holy Communion piece, mm, right? It's part yeah. of the service of the table. Yeah. So it falls in there regardless. And when I was pastoring... You know, I was really willing to shake up a whole bunch of stuff, but I thought it was incredibly important that everybody have some touchstone. We're like, we landed somewhere Mm -hmm. in the worship. Even when we did something that was completely experiential, no liturgy, nothing. There was always some piece that was familiar, the place where where people could kind of ground themselves. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's great about the Lord's Prayer is it's pretty darn innocuous. Yeah. You know, it it doesn't shove any huge theology down. It really is just a, please take care of me, God, and Mm -hmm. us too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know? Um, So that was a great place to do that. Listeners, what has your experience been like with the Lord's Prayer? Do you attend a church where the Lord's Prayer is a central part of what you do in worship? Is it something that you've used in your personal prayer life? Because I think that's incredibly effective and useful, yes. especially when you don't know what to pray or how to pray. The Lord's Prayer is always a, an amazing touchstone. We would love to hear from you. You can always email us, uh, Elaine, E-L-A-N-E, and Benton, B-E-N-T-O-N, at schoolforseekers.com. We would love for you to join our mailing list so that we can email you. Uh, because we have things coming up. We have courses coming up and other things. We want Books. to keep you books yeah and we want to keep you posted on all of those things so um please do join our mailing list you can do that at schoolforseekers.com we would also love to hear from you any ideas you have for episodes we are planning season four as season three is winding down soon we'll be taking a break from new episodes for a while but we'll be back and we've got some great things in mind and in store for next year uh, with season four so we would love to hear from you now is the time let us know what you, questions you have what kind of language Maybe you have questions about or concerns about. Uh, We did that whole series this year on sort of defanging language. And I think that was a really useful thing to do. I know it was great for me. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice to do a deep dive on some of those words that that either needed some clarification or maybe some... uh, some defanging. Personally, I want all the gotcha questions. You know all those gotcha questions? Oh, the yeah. ones that some of the people on the other side I could name names, but I won't mm-hmm. like to really throw out at progressives and liberals, right? Mm-hmm. As if now you're going to show just how anti-Jesus you are. <laughs> right. Please send them because yeah, I would love for us to have a stab at those. We, yeah, we love those. We do <laughs> love those. We really do. Well, I'm going to enjoy this lovely drink that you made for me, okay. and I really do appreciate you guys listening. I hope that you will share us with your friends. Your subscribe, ones, subscribe, 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 because that helps us uh, with the analytics with Google and other places. So uh, please do that. We appreciate you. Talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye.